Hola. <laughs> I'm not speaking Spanish. Sorry if that uh, disappoints you, but you don't want me to. Trust me on that. So I'm Sherry. I'm the community manager at Magento. Um, that really means a lot of things, um, and you can come ask me about it later if you want to know. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today is about building an inclusive Magento community. Um, I think inclusivity and diversity have really been top of mind for a lot of people in our community. Um, and so, and it's also near and dear to my heart. Um, I need to use the clicker, I'm realizing. I'm a professional, don't worry, I got this. Not really. Um, so anyway, this is uh, me when I was three, and the reason that I say that this has been important to me a, a, for a long time um, is because I used to try to invite pretty much everyone I knew to my birthday parties, um, and my mom was like, no, we're not buying cake for the entire neighborhood, so you're going to have to narrow down that list. <laughs> um, so really, it, it's a long-standing problem where I want to include everyone, but it's very convenient for my current role, so it works out well now. Um, and another reason why it's a really important topic to me is because I know how intimidating it, it can be to go to your first event. Is anyone here um, for the first time ever at a Magento event? Yeah? OK, cool, a few of you. Um, so I was so nervous to go to my first Magento event, which was actually um, our first Imagine, which is what this is from, um, that honestly I had so much social anxiety I didn't really want to go, um, but I also knew I didn't want to miss it. This is me at the party on the first night. I think so clearly I recover quickly <laughs> from social anxiety. Um, but I, I do know that um, if we can be more inclusive and welcoming to people, it will really help with people who even seem super extroverted and social. So um, disclaimer, I'm not an expert on this topic whatsoever. <laughs> um, but it is really important to me. And I did a lot of research for this talk to kind of understand it better. Um, my friend's mom, I find that your friend's mom is usually one of the best people in the world to uh, learn things from, um, <laughs> told us that if you want to change the world, you have to change your corner of it first. Uh, and it turns out that my corner of the world is pretty big these days. <laughs> Magento has certified developers in 78 countries, maybe more since the last time I looked, I'm not sure. Um, and on six out of seven continents. So I always joke that we need to teach the penguins how to magento so we can make that seven out of seven. <laughs> but um, if you want to help me out with that, let me know. <laughs> we also have meetups in um, over 30 countries. I forget the exact number now, and it's grown actually since this slide. Um, but it's really exciting to see magento uh, community form in all these different areas around the world. Um, but as that happens, really, um, you do end up forming, uh, forming groups. Um, it just happens naturally, um, and clicks happen. And so we really have to make a concentrated effort to work on inclusion with everyone. So these are some of the faces in our community that have talked around diversity or inclusion um, over the last year. One of them, Sonia, who talks about it probably the most in our community is right here, so she can uh, correct me on everything I say as we go. <laughs> and I might reference her a lot. But um, we had a women in diversity panel at Imagine this year. Um, a couple of podcast episodes around it, one for International Women's Day, um, one when we were at the Unconference in the Netherlands. I uh, hear that one is really hard to hear with the audio, though, because <laughs> we had a lot of people around, a small mic. Um, and then there's been articles written as well. Um, it's just been really, really top of mind. So what I want to do today is two things. I want to present an understanding of diversity and inclusion, because I know not everyone is necessarily um, aware of what that means. And then give you some actionable takeaways that you can apply um, individually. So uh, again, it goes back to making that difference starting in your own corner of the world. And I have some tips for you on things that you can actually do today um, to help with that. Uh, starting off, uh, defining diversity. So diversity has a lot of definitions. Um, for me, most importantly, it's really anything that causes us to experience life differently than someone else. Um, I really think that at its core, that's what it is. It's a little broader than just gender and race, even though that's what we often focus on. Um, but when we, when we look beyond that, but when we look beyond the visible, it really helps us eliminate the us versus we and really understand the importance of having it. So 
uh, if you're in the UX world, or even for those of you um, who work in front-end design, this is probably the easiest picture of diversity. <laughs> um, whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux or Android, you experience things differently on the web, even from the same content. Um, and I think that's a good picture as to how we see things differently in our world based on our own individual backgrounds. So I have some elements of diversity for you here. Um, on the left are some of the ones that we're a little more used to. Um, of course, gender, age, and race, because those are very easy to see. Um, but then there's other things as well, such as educational background, um, cognitive style, things like that. And then on the right, um, I also have a different way of looking at diversity, which is roles in our ecosystem. So these are common roles um, in e-commerce. And um, they're all important for how we see things um, and how, how we work together, um, but they all operate differently. Has anyone heard of the Techies Project? <laughs> Only those who have been in my talk before. <laughs> um, so the Techies Project was done actually by Helena Price um, in Silicon Valley in the States. And she um, really wanted to get to the core of what diversity was about um, and about how Sorry, so I actually have my computer here as well so that I can cheat and look at my notes, but I only need it for like seven slides, so I'm way behind at the moment. All right, um, she really wanted to get to the crux of seeking what diversity is really about, which is not about percentages and about filling quotas, um, but it's about the power of diverse perspectives that comes from our different ways of life. Um, so I'll, I'll look at it a little bit more as we go, um, but I think it's a really good way to look at that site and see like we come from these different backgrounds, whatever they may be, and that really changes how we look at things. Um, but she, what she did was she did like a call for um, stories, more or less, and had people um, on, on Medium, which is a little meta because it's Silicon Valley, but that's okay. Um, and she wanted people just to share their backgrounds, and then she brought them in and did full interviews with them and um, photo sessions as well. So like I said, I'll come back to that. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever had a problem that you couldn't solve on your own. Be honest. Okay, okay, we have a pretty truthful audience. Um, so that really is why it's important to have different perspectives. Like, it really is that simple. We need people around us who think differently. Um, <coughs> so beyond um, the elements of diversity that we've already looked at, there, there are many different ways that the community collaborates together, which is amazing. Um, we have over like 1,200 unique contributors in various elements of the ecosystem, um, whether it's for pull requests and issues on GitHub or the MSI project or DevDocs event organization, whether you're technical or not technical, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, there is a way for you to contribute to the community if that's something that you are interested in doing. Um, so getting a little into um, a little bit more around where that need for diversity comes from. Um, by 2020, according to Women Who Code, there will be 1.4 million computer science jobs available in the US. Um, only 400,000 potential computer science college grads um, that year, which leaves 1 million jobs unfilled. Um, now, this is only US data, I apologize, and I know that you don't have to have a computer science degree to work in computer science. Um, but it just gives you a picture of the need that there will be if we don't get more people involved, which is why it was awesome to hear actually what Inchu is doing, um, specifically in the Croatia uh, region, to, to really work on improving that gap. Um, in the Magento ecosystem specifically, in 2016, there were 1,100 jobs at Magento Partners um, alone, which obviously we know that number is larger um, if you look on the broader ecosystem beyond just partners. Um, and then in 2020, that's projected to be 36,000 jobs. We definitely need more people. Um, and if you've ever tried to hire anyone in the Magento world, but especially Magento developer, you know how hard that is, um, which is actually why Kaylin Jordan created uh, Commerce Hero to kind of help address that need um, and connect Magento professionals with uh, Magento companies. So basically all of that just to say inclusion is crucial. It's very important. Um, and it takes a team. It's very intentional, and we all need to work together on our own. So I'm going to talk a little bit to those who organize events. Raise your hand in here if you organize an event at all, whether it's meetup, conferences. OK, cool. Awesome. There's quite a few of you in here. Awesome. 
Um, so I have a few tips for you, um, and then I'll come back to everyone else in the room and give you those tips I promise about what you can do throughout today. So I often hear, how do I get more fill in the blank? Uh, this is usually filled in with women, as I'm sure you can guess, but really, um, again, it goes back to with diversity of thought, we need all kinds of different perspectives. So, but how do I get more diverse people attending and presenting at my event? Oops, too far, okay, yeah? Awesome, I forgot what order my slides are in. Um, so number one, implement diverse representation. Um, actually, uh, Sonia and I and some others were talking to Guido about this at Meet Magento, I'm sorry, the Mage Unconference Netherlands. See, there's so many events I can't keep them straight. I'm merging them together in my head. Um, but he mentioned, we had a lot more women the previous year. Why do you think that is? How can we get more women here? And Sonia pointed out they had women on their team organizing the previous year, and they were sharing a lot of pictures before the event of their team. And it really um, helped women feel welcome there because they saw themselves in those pictures. And I think that's one way that you can really help with that. Um, that's also why it's important to have diversity in your speaker lineup, too, because people look at those individuals and say, I can see myself in them. I can do that. I can be there. Sorry, now I'm very conscious of the camera on my face. Um, so going back to the Techies project, um, one of the really cool things about it is that you can actually filter by the different areas. So you can see here, um, you can filter by people who are 50 plus, people who have totally switched their careers into tech but weren't before, um, LGBT community, um, those who are VC, those who have no degree, women, um, and it's a really cool way to either find yourself in that story or find people who are different from you and learn about their perspectives too. Uh, has anyone seen Wonder Woman? Okay, okay, a few. Um, so I don't, I don't, you may or may not have seen this. Um, if you haven't seen Wonder Woman, it probably didn't stand out to you, but this is a little girl meeting Gal Gadot who starred as Wonder Woman. Um, at the San Diego Comic-Con, and she actually started crying when she met her because it was um, one of very few times that there's been a lead superhero role as a female, and so the little girl could see herself in her and really identify that. Um, there was actually a lot of the representation research I found was done around um, Hollywood and around the comics world, and so um, a lot, because a lot of it's around the superhero space. Um, I, don't, I don't know why that is, but it is. <laughs> and there was a, there's a podcast episode, actually, um, some comics podcast, and someone was talking about Miss Marvel and how um, when they saw Miss Marvel, it really helped them realize that they could just be a stronger version of themselves. They didn't need to be someone totally different to make an impact in their world, um, which really just goes back to representation and, and just seeing yourself, hel helping people see themselves um, in a way that they can, they can be there, too. Another thing you can do is offer a diversity scholarship. So I've seen a few companies do this recently. Um, and actually, um, Yesse at uh, Mage Test Fest came up to me and was like, hey, like, um, I, I was having problems finding um, female speakers for this event. He actually talked to many, many people, looked at many like women in tech websites, looked at, um, talked to other women in the PHP space, and no one could really think of a female who was a leader in the space because it is such a niche event. Um, and it was a really interesting problem, and one of the things that we talked about was providing a diversity scholarship um, to help get more women and more minorities and, and other, um, other diversity into the event um, so that next year or in the future when there's an event on testing, there will be other leaders in that space. So that's another thing you can do. Um, another thing is really make sure that expertise is the qualifier. So I have talked to many um, women usually who uh, someone has come up to them and be, and basically their entire pitch is, I need more women speakers at my event, will you come speak? Um, I don't think that anyone else would find this flattering either um, to be like, hey, I need, I need more dudes at my event. Will you come speak? <laughs> like, it's just, it's not a good outreach statement. So make sure that when you're inviting people to speak, you're inviting them based on um, their qualification for their expertise, not on their qualification to add to your diversity. Uh, another thing that you can do that's really cool for inclusion to get people talking is to show them how they relate to each other. 
Um, has anyone seen Office Space? Okay, it's really interesting to see how movies translate from the US to the rest of the world, because um, if I asked that question in the States, I think 90% of the room would raise their hand. Um, but in Office Space, um, just so that everyone knows why I even asked. Uh, they, the main, one of the main characters has a significant amount of buttons that she has to put on her outfit at work, and they call it pieces of flair. Um, so that was my connection there. But I've been to a few conferences lately where they have these different elements that you add to your badge, and it really helps as a conversation starter when you wake up, when you wake up, yeah, <laughs> that too. When you walk up to someone um, and you're introducing yourself, um, so f um, on the left there, the green sticker actually means you can come up and talk to me, um, and that's totally cool. The interesting thing I thought at that event was they also had a yellow sticker, which means talk to me if you know me, and a red sticker that meant don't talk to me, and I was like, okay. <laughs> but the green sticker I think is really helpful, and actually the smiley face button on the right there for them, the DrupalCon badge is the same thing. It's just to let people know that you're willing to talk to whoever, so to please come up and say hi. Because sometimes we don't always know looking at people like, do you want me to come talk to you? Do you not? I don't know. By the way, the answer for that for me is yes, please come talk to me, always. Um, okay, moving on. Individual inclusion, what you guys can do starting today, starting right now, um, to really help include those around, which by the way, it makes yourself feel included too, pro tip. Uh, first one is be accessible. Don't hide in speaker rooms or, um, or, or other areas where it's hard to find you. Um, make sure that it's easy for people to find you and it's easy for people to have those conversations. Um, and, and actually just approach them as well. Um, that helps too. Uh, as Ignacio mentioned earlier, the Pac-Man role with which Sonia brought up to our community uh, I don't know, a month ago or so. It was like right before I gave this talk for the first time. I was like, perfect, I'll just insert that right in here. Um, but what that really means is, see that, that gap in the Pac-Man's mouth? That's the space you should leave in your circle. So when you're standing there talking to everyone, make sure you leave room for someone to walk up and join. Again, it helps them, it, it helps make you accessible and helps people know that you want to talk. Um, but I would also encourage you to take that a step further. Sometimes even when you do that, you see people kind of hovering behind because they're still not sure, like, am I welcome there? I don't know. Like, if you see that, invite them in. Um, another thing you can do is just create space for those around you. Uh, sometimes that's as simple as maybe you were invited to a speaking opportunity, but you can't do it. Suggest someone else who would be a good fit who they may not know about um, because they haven't been as uh, prevalent everywhere. Um, and, and advocate for those around you. Uh, another thing you can do is be a mentor. So um, a really cool initiative that they did for Mage Titans Italy this year, which was Alessandro Ronchi, um, Rebecca Brockton, and Andra Langu. I don't know if I said her last name correctly, but she's a nice person, so she'll forgive me. Um, what they did was they mentioned, in order to get new speakers there, they mentioned that they were offering speaker mentorship. And as a result of that, actually 50% of the speakers, um, I think even of those who submitted were new speakers, which was really cool. Um, maybe not necessarily new to speaking entirely, but at least new to speaking at an international event. Uh, another way you can get involved with mentoring, there's a site called PHP Mentoring. It's php-mentoring.org. You can go ahead and sign up on there and tag yourself for any areas that you're interested in mentoring on. Um, you can also go on there and search for someone to mentor you. And um, back to Commerce Hero, again, if you go to commercehero.io slash mentor, I believe, um, you can also see people there who have marked themselves as being interested in mentoring, um, and you can find someone there to reach out to. Uh, another thing you can do, which is really important, is to educate yourself. I did... Uh, hours upon hours of research on this topic because I wanted to know and understand it better so that I could really um, help be more inclusive in, in understanding of diversity within our own community. Um, if you're interested in those notes, you're totally welcome to them. Just ask me. I have them in a Google Doc. I will warn you it's like 40 pages long of just my notes from it, but it'll give you an idea of some places to look. Um, and then I have one more resource for you in a minute here, but really um, I think the importance of diversity and the importance of inclusion comes down to our fear of the unknown. So that's where diversity is really a struggle for people because when we don't know things, um, we get a little scared because we don't know what to expect. And I think the more you can learn about those around you um, and backgrounds, 
um, will really help you with that. Um, one book that I really recommend on this is called Blind Spot. It's about the hidden biases of good people, and it really just helps you understand um, hidden biases you may have. There's some self-tests in there, which are kind of eye-opening sometimes. Um, and once you learn those things about yourself, it makes it a little bit easier to address them and just um, be aware of them and conscious of them. Another thing you can do is follow people different from you. Um, I use the term follow because I feel like sometimes my word revolves around Twitter, but uh, that doesn't mean like stalk them because that's creepy, <laughs> just to clarify there. Um, so we actually have 20 Magento Masters. Um, if you're not familiar, familiar with that program, please come talk to me. That's our top contributor program across all areas of contribution that I mentioned earlier. And um, these 20 individuals are from 12 different countries. Um, and from quite a few different backgrounds as well. Uh, so if you follow them, you'll actually learn about others in their corners of the Magento world, which is pretty cool. It's interesting because both years that we've done this so far, when we got as many of them as possible into the same room, there were multiple people who hadn't met each other before, or hadn't even heard of each other before, which baffles me because I don't know about you guys, but I have this thing where if I know this person and I know this for that person, in my head they know each other. I forget to introduce them. It's Crazy, awkward, anyway. Um, most important of all, say hi to people you don't know. Uh, it's a really easy tip to be inclusive and also just to make your day a little bit more interesting to meet new people. Um, that's all I have, apparently, because that's my last slide. So uh, I, I think one thing I forgot earlier was if you're speaking today and you haven't done that yet, um, one thing Sonia suggested, which I think is really cool, is to share like three random things that you also could talk about forever besides Magento, or maybe I'm the only one that can do that, but or whatever you speak about today. Um, so if you don't want to talk community or Magento or inclusion or diversity, Actually, you can talk to me about pretty much anything for forever. But uh, two areas that I'm really into right now that are totally unrelated and random is kickboxing and whale watching. Uh, so if those intrigue you at all, feel free to come find me. But that's all I have for you guys. Thank you. <laughs>